You're a bounty hunter? Most of it's not that exciting. You go to the police station, let them know you'll be blowing in some doors. You take your crew out. Oh, so once you know where they're at, you're not going in alone. You're going in with the whole squad. No. The only time you end up with something alone is where you just run into them at Ralph's. What is that like? Well, that's a ton of fun. Hello, everyone. It is a quiet day at a park. Uh, I've come here alone to be a gecko and try to talk to people i uh, i don't know if anyone is going to be down to talk to me but uh that's okay too i could sit here alone for an hour i don't mind i'm trying to learn how to go more with the flow of what's going on in life so let's see what's up we're hanging out we're in the sun we're alive we're outside of our rooms we we're are. off the computer this is all i've ever wanted it's just look at other people in the friggin' face. This is crazy though, cause yeah, like, please, I'd, I'd listen to you constantly yeah. at work, and I'll, you know, hop in the live streams. You do? Oh fuck yeah! I've tried calling in so many times. Okay, now here, but, now that we're okay, this is perfect. But this is wild. This is perfect, cause now that we're here, what is there a thing that if you called in, you would want to talk about? That we can. This is better. We can do it in face to face. No, I just wanted to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay, but but. Okay, when you're listening to the podcast, though, uh -huh. and I know this because I've do the, done this with podcasts that I've listened to, I imagine what I would say were I on the show. You've never once, as you've listened to all these people share things, you've never once thought to yourself, what would I share if I were on the podcast? Not, I mean, I don't know. I just, yeah, I, no, I haven't, I haven't really thought about it like I'm gonna that. I'm going to get to the fucking bottom of you before this. All right, all right. Is over. This is a challenge that I'm accepting. This is unreal. <laughs> what is what is your life like? Just give me a baseline. All right, so this is my beautiful girlfriend. That's wonderful. Hello, nice to meet you. Um, I work. Uh, I build closets. Okay. Um, live a pretty simple life. Do you play video games? I do play video games. Okay, you build closets. You play video games. You live a simple life. What is your relationship with the life you live? Do you ever reevaluate your simple life and wish to make I it more complex, or are you fairly happy where you're at? I'm I'm more so striving for more. Okay. For, Ah, fuck. More so. <coughs> Hold on. No, I'm here. <coughs> I'm with you. I wish I should have brought water. It's okay. Do you have any water? No. No, we had water. Okay, in the we'll water. be fine. We can swallow our own spit, clear our throats <laughs> that way. Throat, throats. I said throats, which would be a good plural for the words throat. You will live a minimalistic lifestyle, but you are striving for more. That's what you oh, were saying. No, it's not minimalistic. I spend a lot of money on okay. hobbies. Okay. And stuff like that. Okay. Um, but you yeah. would say simple simple for the most part yeah okay well now when you when you say you're striving for more okay. could you put to words at all what that more would be uh, definitely more money more money striving for more money okay <coughs> fuck you spend a lot of money you're striving for more money what do you do now you, you build closets can you make a lot of money building closets uh <clears throat> not at the pace that i'm at okay but definitely in the future if i keep going with it Okay. I would be able to get to a certain point where I would be making a lot more money than I am now. Okay. And this money, you say you spend a lot of money. What do you spend money on? Uh, do, you know, do you know what uh, you know what Funko Pops are? Yes, I do know Funko Pops. Oh, are. dude, I I have I have quite a few of those. I think I have like ninety five of them. But, With ninety five Funko Pops. But the my whole collection value is worth like five grand, I think. These Funko Pops. Mm-hmm. Do they give you great joy in life? Yes. You said that instantly. You didn't have to 100%. think about it. Nope. And so you said you want more money. Yeah. If you got more money, would mm -hmm. you spend it on more Funko Pops? No. No, probably not. Maybe every once in a while, but I mainly want to start saving up more money to start traveling. To start places. traveling. Okay. Uh, you need to save up money for a gigantic suitcase so that you can bring all the Funko Pops with you when you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to start traveling? Where do you want to go? Um, a couple of places that I have in mind are like Japan. I'm gonna go to Japan. I want to go to Egypt. I'm gonna okay. go to Cairo. Do they have rare Funko Pops in that you can only get in Egypt and Cairo? Or am I overestimating? No, no, no they don't. The place that I, Funko Pops take in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A little, little bit of an overestimation. Okay. I mainly want to go because of you know how pretty all the spaces are. Okay. Uh, these Funko Pops, mm -hmm. you, without hesitation, answered very confidently that they give you great joy in life. Yeah. Could you explain why? Um, it's more so, uh, 
Oh, shit. This is, okay. Because um, it kind of reaches... Oh, I just pressed the button. Oh, no, no, there's... Oh, hey, let me, let me see that guy. Right up to your mouth, like okay. this. There we go. Beautiful. There we go. Yeah, great so... Technique. Uh, I guess it's more so hinting towards, like, childhood stuff. Hmm. Coming from a little bit of a poor family. Hmm. Buying myself things that I couldn't necessarily have as a kid. Hmm, okay. And um, buying yourself things that you couldn't have as a kid gives you fulfillment. Yes. Are, are you just like stuff from your childhood in general? Do you have, have a lot of sort of childhood toys? Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I have a lot of Legos, a lot of comic books, um, a lot of Funko Pops. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, you want more money to travel. Uh, what is between you and making more money? Mm, I'm trying to balance uh, school right now too. Oh, you go to school? So, uh, well, not fully, but I'm trying to get myself back into the groove. What do you do, do at school? <sighs> Shit! Right now, I'm just trying to build up enough credits at my uh, community college so okay. I can transfer into a like a regular state school. Okay. And then you want to, does that like lead you to a, a major that you want to do that gets you into uh, career you want to do? Yeah. Business, uh, business and business management. Business and business management. What, what do you want to do in business, business I management? I definitely want to open up my own store some, someday. What, what, what kind of store? Is it, is it a Funko Pop resale store? It's comic related. Yeah. Really? Okay. You want to yeah. open a comic book store? Yeah. Like I want to build or not build, but I want to make a, like a safe space for a lot of people. Yeah. that are into stuff like that so I wanted to kind of I want to sell comics collectibles and I want like the store to open up during certain hours and then after after hours it would be like a, a place where people can go and play games like Dungeons okay. and Dragons like card games and yeah. shit like that now you said you mentioned safe space now you you seem like you are more interested in the community aspect of this yeah than just the you know the toys Tell me, uh, growing up, or just even now in your regular life, these uh, things that you identify with, comic books, Funko Pops, have you found yourself, um, I, I'm, I, I guess, at the subject of scrutiny for your your liking of them? And, and that is propelling you to want to make a place where people who enjoy them can all come together? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. What kinds of scrutiny? I don't know. Not not entirely sure what that word means, but like sh- shit, you know, like like you said, a safe space, space where I guess that implies people won't get made fun of yeah. when they're doing, you know. Yeah. No. Well. Yeah. Because I know that a lot of people like look uh, upon people who are really into that and are mm-hmm. like, "Oh, you fucking nerd!" Mm-hmm. and like go do that in like a private space. Like we don't want to see you. Sure. Because like if you like. Most of the people that like walk into like a, a coffee shop or mm-hmm. something like that, they're they're just like if you see someone playing a game like that, and they're like, why the fuck are you doing this here? Mm. Mm. So I want I want to have a, a space for people to just go, not feel like ashamed for doing things that they like. Yeah, yeah. Have you often f- felt ashamed for doing things that you like? Um, sometimes. Sometimes if I'm like in a bookstore, if I'm in like the comic book section Mm -hmm. shit like that i feel like people have wandering judgy eyes Hmm. Hmm. it's interesting to hear you say because i i'm the my favorite part of this interaction has been you answer you answered the question of if these funko pops bring these funko pops if they bring joy to your life you answered immediately yeah you were like yes yeah and there's no has i can tell that they really do and that's a happiness that i think a lot of the people that are ashamed that you know what might be giving you those those eyes that Maybe you feel used to. They, they're they envious of, of, of that, perhaps. Possibly. You know. Uh, that's great that you have this, this jo- thing that gives you a lot of joy and you want to open up a place where other people can celebrate their joy of that thing. And I hope you do it. Yeah, me too. It's probably going to cost a lot of money. Probably. You're going to have to sell the Funko Pops. Probably. But you would rather die, wouldn't you? Yeah. What's your name? Drew. Thank you for talking to Gecko, Drew. I appreciate you, man. Have a good rest of the day, guys. Of course you can have a hug and a picture. Let's fucking do this. I liked that guy. Um, I, I could sense 
some nervousness from him, some apprehension from him. But um, I really want to get, I really wanted to get to the core of his emotions, his views, his feelings. And I think we did. And I think he showed up not having anything to say and then subconsciously revealed things that he wanted to say. And then we we tried to get him to say more about the things. What's up, man? Hey. Oh, man, that's awesome. Hey, Gecko, how you doing today? Doing good. What's your name? Spike. Spike. Nice. That's a fucking cool name. Well, thank you. Yeah, so you guys are agents? Yeah, we're bounty hunters. Oh, you're bounty hunters? Yeah. You're a bounty hunter? Yeah. Can you explain w- what exactly that is? Sure. Uh, when somebody is arrested for a crime and supposed to go to trial, they place a bond, and that guarantees their appearance. Some people don't follow through. The uh, bloke we're after right now, um, women by drugging them. Jesus. And his uh, girlfriend, his sister, and her boyfriend put up $100,000 to get him out. Oh, my God. And uh, then he skipped. So once we have a piece of paper from the court, I can arrest him the moment I put eyes on him. And I'm not constrained by search warrants. Or I can just blow doors in and... So most of it's not that exciting. You're okay. just looking around and you're offering people $5,000 to drop a dime on them until you get the address. Then you go to the police station, let them know you'll be blowing in some doors. You take your crew out. This is Badger over here. Hello, Badger. Can I talk, Badger, you want to talk after? Well, let's, I want to hear from you first. Yeah, so uh, we figure this guy is one of two places. Okay. He's either being hidden by the girlfriend or he went to Korea. If you went to Korea, it's pretty easy. We got his Korean ID, and you can't flush a toilet there without your ID number. Yeah. Uh, old mate of mine is a retired Brigadier General of the Marine Corps, mm-hmm. so he'll hit the guys at the U.S. Embassy there because the Marines work for the State Department protecting the embassy. And I'll zip tie him and uh, drag him into the U.S. Embassy and get him ready for extradition. So what are you guys doing at the park? Uh, ice cream. Uh, yeah, we just finished. Uh, the The case is in Puente Hills, so we just. I live in Koreatown, and uh, so does she. So we came back this way. So, uh, how long have you been spending trying to track this guy down? Uh, we have 186 days to find him, and I would say we're on about day 23. You have 106 days. To 186. Find him. 186. You're on day 23. Are you confident that you will find him? Yeah. So how are you like tracking him down again? You're just like okay. when he posts bail. Yeah. The people that put up the surety have to give all kinds of information. So yeah. does he? So we've got all their IDs, passports, plate oh, numbers. Oh, sorry. Can I ask? Yeah. IDs, passports, plate numbers, uh, their friends, where they work, where he worked, where his friends work, and so what you do is you just go around and politely squeeze because it's kind of embarrassing having a bloke like. Spike just show up with a wanted poster for your boyfriend mm-hmm. at all the shops around mm-hmm. your area. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody always drops a dime. Mm. So normally, and you I, offer the money to, to talk five thousand cash. Wow, all right. that, that could sway a lot of folks. Yeah, because normally a hundred thousand uh, dollar bond will get you a ten thousand bounty. We negotiated a twenty five thousand bounty on this because we might have to hop over to Inchon and back a couple of times. Oh wow. So, so it's a commission only, if you will. <laughs> so this is a, so you only, you only get paid if you get, only, get, only it get paid if you get it done. Man, right. so you so have, have and you seem like you've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. And in that period of time, have you ever sunk a ton of time into a case and and just not found the person? Well, you, you treat every case the same. Yeah. And you have a procedure and you follow it and you'll realize two out of three. In, okay. in, in the time window. Now, sometimes the bail agent, the guy that put up the bounty, or put up the uh, both the bounty and the bond, he may get an extension from the court. But, see, California, people don't realize what's happened out here. What happened? For, okay, for me, it, it's a money train. But for most people, it's terrifying because they've made the compliance requirements for bounty hunters so incredibly difficult. I have one guy that's all he does. A contractor just does paperwork. Yeah. Almost no bounty hunters have come to California anymore. So now the criminals know that at 36 months, if I shot you today and then I go hide and she brings me my food long enough, they're going to throw my file away. Mm. And I'm not going to have anybody looking for me. It's going to be as if it never happened. And that's mm. going to go down to one year. Because they changed the laws where we can't wow. operate here. Wow. There's a few tenacious people like Spike will just get compliant. I have to have a permit f- 
for my handcuffs. Yeah. I have to have a permit for my baton. I have to have a permit for my tear gas. I yeah. have to have an open carry permit. I have to have a concealed weapons permit. I have to have a guard card. It's and I even have to do eight hours with the California Department of Insurance. Yeah. Uh, so nobody's out there looking for these people, uh-huh. except just a few old timers like me. Does this guy know that you're out there oh, looking absolutely. for him? Oh, absolutely. And so he's he's actively so he's actively hiding from you. Yes. And uh, so in your in your line of work, tell me like the moments where you have locked eyes on a person. Well, Does it get it, physical? Are you chasing oh, yeah, yeah, them down? Yeah, yeah. What, what is that like? That must be crazy intense. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I'm getting a bit older now. I have some real big <laughs> blokes that handle some of this for me now. I've got Greedy. He's 6'8", 300. And then i got mm-hmm. Samson. He looks like an uh, NFL running back except bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, it can happen one of two ways. One way, you get a clean dime. Somebody calls you, and really all they're worried about is that they're going to get the reward. Yeah. And you get the address. You run immediately to the local constable shop, whether it's, if it's LAPD, let's say Rampart Station, or if it's the sheriff's, you go to the sheriff's station. You take in your warrant from the court to show that you have the power to arrest this guy. You let them know where you're going to be blowing doors in, and then you go in with six to nine people, and you just overpower them. Oh, so once you know where they're at, you're not going in alone. You're going in with the whole squad. No. The only time you end up with something alone is where you just run into them at Ralph's. Has that shit happened to you oh, before? Yeah, yeah. What is that like? Well, that's a ton of fun because uh, <laughs> people around aren't prepared. You don't have anything in the cop station. You may not have body armor on. So you just, uh, you, well, you charge them and you, you charge at them and you tackle them. Um, Do you have zip ties on you right now just in case if that happens? No, you know, my last pair is in the car and so is my body armor, but <laughs> I'd be all right. Okay. We, we tie him up with a mic cord. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing if he just, like, just was walking by and we right. caught you just and, getting him and, right so now. You, you get these eyes from them, and then you you know you give them some love, and yeah, you try not to hurt them. Okay. So interesting. We're, we're pretty particular. We're, people that hurt children, women, capital. I had a great one. This guy, um, lovely fella, he was playing chess with his best friend, and the guy beat him. The temerity of it. So he shot him in the head, and um, so he was on the FBI's most wanted list, and that's a hundred thousand, right? So I called John, who was the special agent in charge up in Sacramento, and I said, uh, you know, John, I, I, I think we can bring this fellow in. And he's like, well, okay, we've been trying for like seven and a half years. I said, yeah, but you gotta got to go where they covet. This guy covets his little sister. Hmm. And he's in Mexico right now, and I'm not going to Guadalajara for 100 grand, thank you, no. But when he comes back for her birthday party, then... Either you guys can go get him after I sight him, because FBI gets real persnickety. They like to get their own collars. They don't want yeah. some contractor in the middle. So you're an independent contractor. Yeah, that's right. And do the uh, these organizations like the FBI? Do they? How, what's your relationship like with them? Do, you, uh, do they not I, like you? I like am, you? I spent just today $120 at California Donuts. Yeah. Which Eli Vera, who has the most righteous kills for the sheriff's department. Swears is the best donuts in LA. Okay. And so when you like, we took it down to the cop shop in Puente Hills made sure they had a dozen California donuts. We got Badger hand delivering them. She's a lot prettier than I am. And uh, you gotta show respect. It's their fiefdom. Yeah. And really my biggest danger, uh, cause my, my front plate will take a 762 point blank, but my back plate, you know, you can penetrate it and you could always catch this big dog. If you gotten shot yeah, in the, the chest the a bunch? The police are our biggest danger, not cause yeah. they're bad blokes but when you got a large funny looking fellow like me wrestling somebody to the ground and throwing them in the trunk of the car yeah, yeah. they can misinterpret that as a kidnapping oh shit so they, they, they killed the chap over here not so long ago because he wasn't that's why we wear all this gear yeah yeah just in case if like, like have you ever been like shot by a cop uh, not yet mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. but that's like a, a possible like, thing got shot at with a 12 gauge but they missed Jesus but, yeah man how long have you been doing all this for uh, 2008. Since 2008, so uh, uh, math, but um, yeah, 14 years. Is 14 it? years? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. 14 years. Have you always wanted to do this? No, no. I, I um, was a professional soldier before. Okay. And I just thought, well, wh- wh- how do you take these skills and put them into society in a productive way? Okay. I don't like evil. Okay. So you know, why not get child molesters, rapists, and capital murderers off the street? I like that. I like that. And these I, these are people that didn't show up for court, so they screwed everybody that loves them. Yeah. And, you know, I've had a few ruckuses with the FBI, and I stayed and faced the music, and it all went away. Okay. If you're innocent, you, you don't bolt. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, a lot of analysis from a gecko. What's been the most difficult part of your job? Uh, sometimes you feel sorry for the bloke. Really? That's why I prefer more heinous crimes where I don't get that. Can, this is that's a super interesting thing. What 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 makes you feel sorry for people even even if they've done heinous things? Well, I mean, I'm born again and I used to be a really evil person. Okay. And so I, I can't judge anybody. Sure. Most of the people I arrest are probably nicer than I was. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, sometimes if somebody got another chance, they might make it. But I, sure. that's not my duty. A guy gives me a contract. Somebody basically stole hundred thousand from him, yeah. or two hundred fifty thousand, or a million, and it's my job to go bring them in, mm-hmm. and then they face the music that they created. Interesting. So, because you, you're you're born again, and you're sort of reformed from from a life in which you yourself were doing things that were not so great, you it gives you a greater empathy for people who are also doing things that are yeah, not. Yeah, so that's great. why I'm not interested in people that haven't committed much in the way of crimes and the crimes aren't that serious sure Th- sure so you're going for the real motherfuckers. yeah and you look at the file right this guy's got a 10 year old girlfriend that wow. he, he's using and then she's going to lose her house now and then he's brought in the sister who's got a boyfriend that's 20 years old that i went to his house i got his id right yeah and he's like oh, i don't know this guy and i'm like i'm, <laughs> I'm st- standing here next to you but i haven't talked to the police in your area yet so i'm not going to make a ruckus today mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it's amazing everybody's innocent and uh, they're all the victim mm-hmm. that's very interesting yeah, well, right? here, where's my phone here so you know seeing's believing right yeah yeah definitely well, what you got on there uh, well I, you got to keep the stress up on the people that are going to drop the dime right yeah so here is this is the girlfriend, okay? So here's the text. So you've been te- you've been sending texts to oh, this yeah, guy, yeah. the guy oh. that you're find the guy that you're looking for. And, and these are texts to his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, okay. So this is a weird case because uh, he could turn himself into the embassy in Seoul, and I got enough hookups with the Marine Corps, I don't have to go. Yeah. And we can make it a lot easier on him because the Orange County DA, it's just which isn't really a crime in California. It'd probably just exonerate him, not extradite him. Really, it's not a crime in California. Uh, it's not one they'll extradite from a foreign country. Jesus. So anyway, we went by. I was going to put a tracker. Well, not officially. You can't do that in California. But let's say that somebody was going to put a tracker. This would be a bad location. So we just took a picture of the car. I said, we were in town. Your attorney hasn't called me. Tell us his location, please. 5000 in cash. You, He won't know how we found him. We'll be back to serve the lien on your house. Be smart. Give him up. My attorney will call you. My attorney will sue you. Yes. Okay. I mean, haven't called it. Is journey before you lose your home, miss. How am I supposed to do this? How am I supposed to? You know how to get him. Do the right thing. You just keep the same message going. Oh wow! Yeah, what? that's that's crazy. I mean, you think she should stay with him? I I don't I, no I don't think she should stay with him at all. Right. So she probably ought to move on. She probably ought to keep her house. Yeah. No. She should <laughs> probably give him give him up. Yeah. yeah and I give her five thousand in cash. Man. Uh, these are wild. So you're you 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 must see you know doing what you do. You must see like sides of humanity that that most people don't get to see. Oh, that's a probably a fair statement. Uh huh. We get the true flotsam. Uh huh. Well, which is, is nice. Tonight, on an average week, we've cleaned LA out of one hardened criminal scumbag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you get a deep sense of pride from doing that. No, I get a deep sort of paycheck. <laughs> so, but, you know, you, you got to make a living here, and how do you do it honorably? Yeah. When yeah. all I know how to do is blow things up and shoot at them. Uh huh. You know? And you, if you're going to blow things up and shoot at them, you might as well do it. You're, you're like Dexter, kind of. Yeah. No. You're Dexter? No, I'm not. I do personal protection, but I, I'm not good with the, the blue M&M set. So what are I, blue M&Ms? You know, the. The stars that are, oh, okay. you know, you got a two Escalades driving up Bel Air Hills backwards, and then I've they, never seen Dexter. Then they, I then shouldn't they admit that. Bill MDMA all over your car, and you got to mm-hmm. explain. I got a deal though. I'm going to Israel. What are you and, doing in Israel? Well, I'm I'm growing out my beard, okay. and I'll shave my head so I look like the guy that I'm protecting. That way, he's got a 50 percent greater chance of living right away because okay. they can shoot the wrong fellow. Um, he wrote a, a book about uh, Islam that was deemed offensive, so they have a fatwa, a kill order on him. Oh, geez. So I get to see the Holy Land, and if I can keep him alive, it'll be a bonus. Well, so you're defending somebody who has a fatwa on them? Yeah, yeah. Uh, did he pay you to defend them? Oh, I'm doing this one pro bono. If they just pick up my airfare to Israel and my hotel, I get to see the Holy Land. <laughs> What's, uh, you're doing a pro bono just to see your... 
the Holy Land? Well, I'd like to keep him alive because he seems like a nice chap, and uh, I'd like to see the Holy Land. That's awesome. Are you uh, deeply religious? Uh, no, I'm not religious. I'm Christian. It's completely different. Okay. What What is uh, uh, sort of keeping you in touch with your Christianity? Um, God. <laughs> mm-hmm. Jesus. Uh, it, once you're born again, it, it's profound. Mm-hmm. Um, I live my life for him rather than fit him into my life like a religious person would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, We know the guidelines, and I try to try to do my level best to serve. Well, Spike, it's been crazy talking to you, man. Thank you for uh, your time well, I mean, and for sitting uh, down and chatting wh- with me. Where really does one see it. the gecko? Uh, oh, I'm on a YouTube thing. Seriously? Yeah. All right, well, if this one publishes... Spike likes the gecko. I will endorse him. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. If I, if I, if anyone ever calls a fatwa on me, I'll, I'll give you a call. I'd be the guy. Beautiful. Right, Can I talk to you, Badger? Or are you guys busy? Her English is real low. Oh, okay. No worries. Ah, I got it. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Take care, Spike. Well, that was pretty wild. Um, see you guys. Um, you know what's crazy about uh, doing this show? is that um, sometimes you sit around for uh, 45 minutes, ask a bunch of people if they're down to talk to you, get rejected by most of them. One accepts. They don't really want to talk to you that much. Uh, Or you're just kind of like, well, uh, maybe I should pack it up. But if you stay for a little bit longer than when you were planning on leaving, uh, you will get an interview with a bounty hunter. And if that's not a metaphor for life, then what is? Have Hi, a nice seat. To meet you. Nice to meet you. Augustine. What's your name? Augustine. Yo, my brother's a big fan of you. Oh, hell so yeah. I sent him a picture of you right now and he was like, you got to go talk to him. Like, he's super cool. Fuck yeah. All right. Let's do a, let's, let's, let's have a little chat. Yeah, sure thing. For your brother. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Augustine. Sure. Augustine, yeah. What's, What's your, your life life? Huh? My name is Lyle. Lyle? Nice yeah. to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. What's your life like? Uh, like, what do you mean? Like, in general? Just in general. General? Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. young. It could be better, you know. Like I'm still looking for a career and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, pretty good so far. Okay, so you, there's a lot of like you said. You're, you're how old are you? I'm 22. You're 22, and there's question marks. Yes. In uh, out in the distance. A lot of question marks. How are you feeling when you see those question marks out in the distance? Oh, uh, pretty worrisome. But mm, I'm pretty optimistic about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still pretty young, so I feel that. I have a lot of time to figure things out and to okay. experiment with a few career options and whatnot. Okay. Right now, I'm actually uh, into photography, so I'm hoping to start uh, a photography business. Oh, cool. uh, Maybe get into wedding photography, you know what I mean? Is that what's in there? Yep. It's, yeah, it's what's in here right here, yeah. Okay, what's been, um, what's been uh, exciting to you about photographing things? I just like it. It's just a passion of mine. I like editing photos. Specifically, I like wedding photography. That's my mm-hmm. thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, well, why wedding? Yeah. Is there any, aside from the fact that it's probably the most lucrative form of photography, yeah. Yeah. is there anything that you enjoy about it? Do you, are you like captivated by love? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'd say so. I just like the events, the wedding events. Okay. I just like the atmosphere, you know, like everyone's always happy, everyone's smiling. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and it's just, it's just a fun time. I actually shot a few wedding photography uh, gigs here and there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was the time of my life. When oh, it's been about four hours, they're slowly packing things up. You've gotten all the uh, f- footage that you need. Do you sneak any food? Yeah, of course. Okay. You have to. What's the best thing you've eaten at one of these weddings? Best thing? I've only been to like a Hispanic wedding. So the best thing is probably just like tacos or like some carne asada, some steak. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Some stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I've, I haven't tried the, any cakes though from weddings. I liked hearing you say why you like wedding photography. That was a good answer. You were like, I, everyone's happy. It's yeah. a good vibe. It's it's your your photographing just the positive energy. Right, right. And right. you're trying to capture that in, in the in the photos. Yeah, right, right. Do you hope to one day get married? Yeah, of course. I think. Yeah, of course. I say that now, but probably not for like the next ten years or so. Okay. Yeah. What about you, man? Man, I have I have a complicated relationship with relationships in oh, general. Yeah? You know, I don't, I don't know, man. I like, I love my, I have great friends and I love them and I have great family and I love them. And the thing about like romantic relationships is that like, they're just, they're tricky, you know, mm. they're, they're tricky for everyone. Oh yeah. You know, uh, my relationship with my family though, it's feel, it feels less tricky. It feels more solid. Mm. And then, th- you know, those relationships that have been around forever 
And to then take a new person and be like, I'm going to try to get you on the, level, the yeah. same level as, like, my mom or whatever. Yeah. Like, a person that I've known forever. I mean, that's yeah, it's a hefty sure. task, you know, oh, yeah, if, that, sure, if that's yeah. the ultimate goal. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Especially just finding trust in someone, you know. Just, like, yeah. if you think about it, it's a stranger that you're meeting. Totally. And you're slowly getting to know each other. It's, it's very... It's anxious. It's a lot of anxiety right do there, you, for sure. Do you, how trusting of a person are you, just in general? Um, I'm pretty trusting. Probably too too good for my own. <laughs> like, really? Just too good, yeah. Has there been a time where you have been very trusting yeah. and it has backfired on you? I'd say yes. Like, I forgive more than, you know, I forgive more than I should, I guess. Really? Yeah. I, so. And you don't, you don't have to tell me if you can't think of anything or don't want to share, but has there been a time where you feel like you forgave and you shouldn't um it's more yeah there's i don't want to share it too much sure but yeah there's been situations where yeah sure it's been like that but i don't think it's more about like me forgiving the person that's just like trying to forgive myself ah okay Cause communicating with a person sometimes someone doesn't want to be have that conversation with you you know what i mean let's say mm -hmm. like you do x and y you do something bad mm -hmm. we're not bad in general just like something that makes a person makes like the relationship you know all tangled up and messed up sure yeah and the way i approach it is like i'm not trying to get your forgiveness i need to forgive myself i want to apologize i'm in the wrong yada 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 yeah but i yeah. have to forgive myself at the end of the day and if you can accept my forgiveness then i'm okay with that you know that's uh i like i like that way of thinking because yeah. You can't control what other you can't you you have no control you are i like that because your brain is operating solely within the things that you can control you oh, can yeah, control yeah. you apologize yeah, yeah. you do the best you can to make a you know to make amends with a person and then from there it's you know you, you can't make them forgive you but you can forgive yourself yeah i, li I like that because it's uh Again, it's it's dealing heavily with the things that are within your control. Yeah, it's like a sto it's, it's like stoicism. You that know, is, it's very much stoicism. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Are do you are you into stoic philosophy? I'm into it, but I think that following it like heart to heart, like you know, like hardcore, hardcore is like too extreme, and you're basically a psychopath at that point. Like I don't know. I, I like part <laughs> of me wants to get there, man. Yeah. Like, well, not even just. I think stoicism in the form of like. I have no emotions mm. or I don't connect with people right, is right. like I don't I don't think that that's what stoicism is necessarily mm. but like little things like that like mm -hmm. being a master at worrying about things that are within my control and not worrying about things that aren't yeah. that kind of that kind of stuff yeah, no, I, I enjoy that idea so much mm -hmm. way more than all the other ones like nihilism and everything like that it's have also you, negative you know it's just like you know we're humans you know you can only yeah. control what you can you can control have you had um i'm gonna wait until this ice cream truck passes yeah, sure when i'm done with this i'm chasing that guy down <laughs> he's been walking around for a minute oh yeah no i'm gonna find him because he's got this freaking bugs bunny flavored thing that i'm i got my eye on <laughs> have you uh in the past been drawn to any of these more negative philosophies have you been nihilistic in the past oh yeah especially after a breakup or something you know what i mean okay like what what else can you do you just have to be hating the world mm -hmm. like oh i hate i hate this you know mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. nothing's gonna change how did you get yourself out of that nihilistic point into you seem i don't know you very well but you seem like you're you don't seem very nihilistic to me yeah no how um, did you get yourself out of that yeah thank you um i don't know you just you know do things that you like to do um for me what i what really helped me was just communicating with friends with family uh really spending time by yourself and getting to know yourself what your faults are what you could be better at you know um yeah you just like doing things that you enjoy mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's that's my thing hmm. and so these let's go back to these question marks yeah you're experimenting with photography right what else are you experimenting with right now i'm experimenting with csi crime scene investigations crime scene investigation yes sir that's the i guess <laughs> that's sort of in a in a similar-ish realm of photography i was about to say that they have absolutely nothing to do with each other mm -hmm. but there is for, uh, forensic photography you know like when you go to crime scenes and they take the photos of the dead yeah. bodies and stuff would that, like that be like your shit um i tried it and it's pretty interesting. I like it. What do you mean you tried it? Where do you go to try out <laughs> photographing? Oh, crime just like scenes? internships, uh, oh, okay, sure. you know, courses and whatnot. So I don't know if you're like going you, you rogue get training and, and listening stuff like to that. the police. Radio yeah, no, no, not like, like a vigilante or nothing like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> what what is uh, inspiring to you about crime scene investigation? I just like the service. I like the idea of going to a place, 
looking at all the evidence and using it to someday collect enough evidence to like convict the bad guy you know what i mean mm, okay and it's a uh, it's a very it's a very humbling position too oh that's right it's a very humbling position too because you know you're surrounded by hard things you're surrounded by negative things all the time mm. and somehow you have to get the job done and do what you have to do to like comfort a victim or solve a case you know per se mm -hmm. and uh i really like that but it's pretty hard to get into um you need uh some good experience to get into that which i don't have so which is why i'm experimenting with photography right now in the meantime interesting I, I you're you're again like doing everything that's in your control right because yeah. these, some of these question marks they're things that aren't in your control they're like oh this field is hard to get into these it's hard to get clients for photographers this and that but everything that's within your control mm -hmm. you're doing yeah you know yeah. I, I love that that way of approaching things yeah thank you does that make you less anxious at all just knowing like okay at least i am giving all i've got to yeah. these question marks it's a work in pro progress i don't think anyone just jumps into like all right i'm gonna control my emotions today like you know there's feelings of anxiety for sure of unsureness but you know with exposure you know it will go away you know that's mm -hmm. that's my thing are you are you at this park just walk around by yourself yeah i'm actually not from here i'm from uh, long beach it's like 30 minutes away from here what are you doing here uh i went over to apply for a photography position at a uh, harley davidson dude you're a hustler <laughs> you're gonna be fine these question marks are what's what what's a question mark uh, there needs to be a new symbol mm. for like a question mark that will eventually like like a cocoon mark mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's like there's a question and it's a question right now but it is inevitable that the question mark will turn into a beautiful exclamation point butterfly right we need a new symbol for whatever you got going on because you're inevitable yeah from from how i see it thank you thank you of course yeah, you're man. right yeah like it's like a cocoon it's there but it's yeah. not there yet yeah no for sure for sure but thank you man i appreciate that of course yeah man. i'm just trying you know trying my hardest out here um yeah i think we're all trying you know to be who we want to be and whatnot but mm -hmm. yeah what got you into this like uh were you always like this when you were young did you want to talk to people like did you have that urge to do i was looking through my uh old journals yes i i don't i don't journal as much as i did in the past but i was looking through a journal from four years ago i started this two years ago and at the end of my journal i wrote i want to get better at talking to people and this was before i had the idea to do this and so i think it's been a it's been a warm in my mind for a while mm -hmm. you know to be doing this that's awesome that's awesome yeah thanks man yeah, it's hard for so i don't know i'm for me it was kind of you I started i was gonna say you started this off like you looked very nervous yeah. and now you look very chill oh uh, thank you thank which you. is something i love seeing that too and it's how i see it on people all the time like they start off now i see it on myself all the time where i start off I when i walked up here i with my fucking thing i was like is this a stupid idea to yeah. come do i've done this a billion times every time i do it i'm like <laughs> this is a stupid idea yeah, and then like, i'm a little nervous like, yeah. and now i'm here in the moment yeah. so I, and it's trained me it's interesting because now when i recognize an anxiousness within me at the beginning of something i don't i don't uh give it any any attention anywhere because i just know it's inevitable that it goes away and that i there, this gets to a point where i feel comfortable yeah man or it doesn't but i just power th eventually i will feel comfortable again yeah, man. stoicism right there that's stoicism, that's stoicism yeah ah god <laughs> you're great man what's your name augustine augustine is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer uh no just have a great one and do what you gotta do you know what i mean and uh stay strong that's beautiful it. Yeah. thanks for talking to a guy yeah, for sure man yeah good luck with your yeah. photography thank you, thank career you. do you mind if i get a video of you fuck uh, yeah say my brother's name because he's a big yeah. fan of you fuck yeah yeah let's go let's go let's do it right now hey jacob what's up jacob man i'm here with augustine <laughs> he's a fucking homie is he a younger brother or older brother oh younger brother younger brother 18 years old fucking man this man has <laughs> wisdom augustine all right so you when he tells you things you listen all right <laughs> man jacob thanks for uh watching my gecko stuff and your brother's fucking cool and i hope you have a good day <laughs> all right jacob take care oh dude i'm the best brother right now <laughs> you really are dude. thank you thank you so Yo, much all right very have nice a good to one, meet right? you man good take luck care, with man. everything thank you likewise all right bye later man man i fucked with that guy he was cool i love i love i love seeing it in other people and in myself situations where you start nervous and then you just breeze through it i think that happens enough times you start to recognize the um familiar journey of that and uh, it, it keeps you calm as you navigate it. But I like that guy. He was a good homie. And I wish him luck in uh, photography. And I wish him luck in uh, his dead people photography business.
Oh, you like live streaming this? Uh, we're going to post it on the computer later. What but computer? What, what website? Too, so I, many questions. Do I get a, do I get a sign off? No, you have no uh, say in uh, any of any of this What's stuff. going on, man? You chilling? Uh, I'm doing What's your name? My name is Chikuma. Chikuma. Very nice to meet you. What, what's got you out and about on this uh, fine day? It's a nice day. That's exactly it. Just checking out the lake. Nice weather. Okay. Yeah. Do you live here near um, this park? Not right now. Oh, I'm so. originally from LA, but I live um, Corona right now, so I'm just coming down and enjoying. Okay, the, you said not right now, so you're moving here soon. Planning to, yeah. I'm actually I came down to look for places. What uh, What is bringing you here? I like LA. I grew up in LA, so I want to come back. What do you like about it? The weather, the people. Mm -hmm. It's like you can meet all type of different people. Mm -hmm. You know. Are you a sociable person? You like going out and meeting. I people? I love going out and meeting people and trying new things. Yeah. Have you always been like that? I guess, yeah. yeah. You've always been a very extroverted. I mean, I'm not. I'm guy. not like super extroverted, but I, I just, think you're pretty. You're not like, hey guys, what's up? How's it going? Right, you're right, like, right. like, I'm not like. You have you jumping seem out to of me to have an open. I I I do I do I like to just try new things, man. The world is so big. It's just why not, you know? The world is so big. <laughs> it is. It is. It is big. <laughs> what do you uh, uh, want out of your life? What do I want out of my life? Um, I don't know. That's that's a tough question to answer, right? I just want to be be happy, enjoy the things that I that I can enjoy. I okay. like to enjoy healthy family, mm -hmm. things like that, friends. Yeah. Are you are you happy right now? I'm very happy right now. I'm very thankful of where my life is right now. What is what's making you so happy right now? Uh, honestly, just the things that I'm you know, the things that I'm able to get, the things I'm able to do right now, like can I hear some of these things? Are they are this top Specifically, secret? Specifically. Because you were asking about if so, you have to sign a thing. And I'm right. like, this guy's got top secret projects No, no, going because on. I don't know where you're going to put this. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It could, you know, it's, on, it's going on the computer. <laughs> on the computer. Okay. <laughs> That's where everything goes, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks. No, no. But, so, I mean, not to get too deep. but Let's I just get deep, I yeah. just came back into the U.S. That's why I'm moving. That's why I'm looking okay. for a place. Beautiful. Back in L.A. I used to live in South Korea for the past three years. You lived in South Korea for the past two years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, dude, I am dying to go to South really? Korea. What were you doing there? Teaching, teaching English. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, okay. I mean, that's the best way to get out there and really, really enjoy it. Why did you come back here? It was time. It was time. I did everything I wanted to do out there. So it was time to come back here, be with mm -hmm. family, my friends, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And just keep, you know, keep moving forward, the next phase. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so you move from L.A. to South Korea, but yet you believe the next phase of life is back where you started. No, no. Actually, I moved from L.A. Yeah. To San Francisco, yeah. lived up there for six years or so, then moved to Korea. So okay. I haven't been to L I haven't lived in LA since 2013. So what's the what's the next step? What do you what do you want to do now? Just be in LA, be relaxed, have like a normal life in a way, like okay. you know, work, hang out with friends, regular shit like this, you know. Do you enjoy keeping your life pretty simple? I try to, like, I mean, not simple, but not boring. Like I, I try to keep myself you know doing a lot of things you know okay. that's the way I tell guess. me five things right now that you're doing five things yeah. um i climb rock climbing bouldering Perfect. that's Great. one um that's a totally a thing yeah it is a thing totally a thing it's a big thing actually it's all right we got super, four more it's super fun i am taking swimming lessons that's such a thing you you're all you do a lot of things i do a lot of things i, I like to be active um you're swimming you're swimming you're climbing <laughs> three more things surfing, i know you have that's them. something that's surfing in, in the next month i want to get done um okay. and then work wise like i try we to swim, we climb, i work we in surf. like technology so just we work in technology so trying to get better in that like we I'm swim we climb we surf stuff. we code you are one with the earth from which we came and the human society from which we will go why to not, which we will why go why not man why not like, oh, you got one more thing one more thing of yeah what? uh you do i don't know I, i'm it's not i'm probably there's probably oh i'm learning french actually fuck man you do a lot of things i didn't think you were gonna be able to name five but no, you do climbing swimming surfing technology and french yeah you're a renaissance man i try to i try to take everything that comes you know there's a lot out here so how do you balance doing so many things it's actually quite easy, man. Tell, tell, please tell me. I would love to know. So climbing is like a thing. It's like oh, I by work. Right. Can you keep the mic? <laughs> <There you laughs> sure. Go. So I work nine to five. Yeah. After five, I climb twice, three times a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, from like five to eight, eight o'clock or Kay. seven, and then on Saturday morning. So that's three days of climbing. Mm -hmm. French, I do like an hour, uh, 
a day like when i have a break at work i do like a 30 minute on the app um what else swimming i do twice a week as well after work on mondays and wednesdays Mm -hmm. surfing i haven't actively been doing yet because i want to get my swimming top notch first oh you haven't started surfing yet no i've i mean i've done it like a little bit but i've been really you know like really get into it like i want to like okay actually, sure sure um but yeah so yeah it's like and then your nine to five is the coding technology thing yeah and then do some extra courses after work like not a lot like 30 minutes a day an hour if i have time set a t- timer get shit done it's like why not i bet you can name five more things that you do you <laughs> seem like you do a lot Probably of things not. i don't know that's it for now those are like my top tier things okay you like being out in the world and doing you don't want to sit at home and play xbox and shit N- actually i haven't played video games since I, di- I can't even tell you when man i used to like it when i was in high school and stuff like that but it's just not the same for me anymore but talking yeah. about video games yeah, i man. do want to get an oculus you know the vr oh, yeah, shit? The vr shit bruh that looks fun. So that's my next purchase in the next few weeks. So are you not a af- so you work in technology? Yeah. Are you not afraid of like the Oculus will somehow like destroy your life or like? Sh- what in- but that's like the that's the next phase. Like we went from flip phones to iPhones. The next phase is VR stuff. So it's, you might as well just get into it early. Do you think one day we will be walking around this same park and everybody will just be wearing an Oculus headset? I don't think they'll be doing outdoors. That'd be a little weird. But I think people are going to be having one in their houses because the things you get immersed into, like right now is a lot of video stuff, but yeah. it's going to get so crazy in the future, man. It's like the possibilities are insane. See, I like you because you're like getting heavily into let me put a headset on and go into my computer, but you're also like Let's go out into the ocean. Every, you gotta take le- everything, leave man. The computer it's, behind. But that's it's part of the world. These yeah. are all things presented to you in this world. So it's like you gotta just enjoy it. You know, I like that's that. how I look at it. And then also you have uh, a girlfriend who. That's a friend of mine. That's okay. a friend from university. So okay. I came back down. So I'm trying to reconnect with a lot of my friends. So how's that been going? Reconnecting with your friends. It's been nice. It's been nice. You know, seeing them again, hanging hanging out. It's been fun. Have that's the uh, uh, relationships like kind of picked up where you left them off? For some for some but obviously some people you know some people haven't really grown to you know mm. you know like it's mm. it's still kind of the same so you you, you want to do different things the mm. older you get you know different phase of life um so yeah do you find yourself uh no longer identifying with people that you were good friends with in the past simply because you've grown they've grown no i don't want to say that okay so no not necessarily because there's no like i can't really think of any people that i don't but it's just there are some certain things you know people want to talk about like old friends you want to talk about same shit it's yeah like, eh, we already talked about you're this you know like yeah let's let's go into some new things you know i like that more like that i yeah. like that you're yeah. out in search of of uh new adventure and it's like always that. trying to grow like, that's it that's really it you're you you're like a contradiction where you're always trying <laughs> to grow but you're also staying in touch with what's going on I, g- I guess that's I mean yeah but I feel like if I, I had know, to that, that's in talking to you for five minutes yeah. give you a narrative I guess so because unsolicited that, that kind of stuff anchors say. you in a way it's like you can't just be flying all over and doing you know you just have to anchor yourself in a way but you, I don't know man well I'm gonna uh, let you go back to hanging out with your friends is there anything so else you want to say to the people you the have computer? to tell me what's what's up what is this what, what is, well, this well, is there anything else you want to <laughs> say to the people at the computer before we go uh, there's not much um just you made me feel good about talking about myself it's kind of fun talking about yourself so go out there enjoy enjoy yourself do the things you enjoy make some time to do it you only have one life that's so cliche but you know it's true it's it's fucking true though it's It's cliche because it's true yeah yeah you know for some people it's hard though to have other things going on work and all that stuff but if you have something you really enjoy try to make a little bit of time in now you do five things man you're he's proof that everyone can do yeah. all the things it's not it's not that amazing it's it sounds better than it is it's little things man what's your name again chikuma chikuma very nice checking with you all right man take care i like that guy i gotta do more things how's it going it's going good man what's your name sandro sandro yours lyle mr lyle gecko mr lyle gecko nice to meet you nice to meet you too man <laughs> what's uh what's your life like it's fine, I guess. Okay. How about yours? What would make it better? <laughs> you want to make it better. I would make it better? I guess, yeah. Okay. You just made my day. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. What's, uh, uh, are you, are you, what's bringing you here to this park? Um, actually, I just want to enjoy my Saturday. Okay. And learning some text. 
Learning so, some text. Yeah, I memorize. What kind of text? It's for a script. Oh. Oh, yeah. you're, are you an actor? Yeah. Oh, what kind of what kind of acting do you do? Dramatic acting, comedic acting? Whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not that good in comedian. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I would like to act as a gecko once. Really? Yeah. Okay, I, mean, I should have brought an extra suit. If you had another one, I would definitely wear it, and I would take a swim. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I do kind of, it's getting a little hot. I do kind of want to dive into the lake at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I, I should wear a swan, mm -hmm. like the boats. Did you move to L.A. to yeah. become a star? No, not really. Just to, to live that life. I like to act. Okay. It's not the... Uh, the goal actually to be a star but I, I just I feel so many emotions when I act what kind of uh, emotions the whole bunch from happy to sad I can feel that if I act in in like in front of a camera mm -hmm. but I can't feel it in my personal life like if I'm just talking to normal persons average persons I, I get I never get those emotions which I get when I do acting really yeah. Tell me. Okay. Give me. Let's start with just any emotion that comes to your mind that you get when you're acting that you don't get in your real life. Really sadness. Deeply sadness with like tears. I can't have tears. Really, you don't get deeply sad in your own life. Yeah, I get sad. Of okay. course, I guess everyone gets. But yeah. I, I never can. I never can cry. I mean, oh. once in, in two years, I can maybe have, two or three tears. But I like to have tears. I've, I think it's a kind of a nice feeling, but I don't get it often. Mm. But when I act, they, the tears are coming. Well, when you're acting and you're giving these tears, yeah. do you think that those tears, although they are a product of your acting, come from a real place? I guess they come from a real place, yeah. I'm pretty sure of that because I'm thinking about real moments in my life which made me almost had tears in my real life, but now when I act, the tears are coming. When mm. I think back, it's like, mm. I don't know, something psychic. Mm. What kinds of things make you sad? What kind of things make me sad? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. It makes me sad if people don't treat the nature right. Mm. If they like throw away waste or just throw cigarettes into the lake, or, I don't know, kick animals. Mm -hmm. Some things make me really sad. Or if people don't help each other, mm. if they are honking at each other on the streets, I hate mm -hmm. that. I would never do that mm -hmm. because I think it's very rude. Mm -hmm. What do you think? So, um, I also agree. I think it's very rude too when people honk on the streets. I think that uh, <laughs> honking, like, cars don't really need horns because honking no. is less of a... <laughs> thing that provides solutions to problems and more of just an expression of anger for the sake of that expression right um so car horns make you cry people being mean to animals <laughs> makes you cry i agree definitely and <laughs> when you're acting and you're crying you're thinking about these things not about the car honking but yes mm -hmm. about auto fix yeah mm -hmm. what is it, what's another emotion that you channel right, through acting I'll get it. Hmm. like real I would say real honest happiness because I, I don't get these feelings a lot a lot I'm not one of the sunshine persons which can walk like this the whole day I mean I got of course I'm happy sometimes but not not all the day and it's not that it's not the same mm. you get it mm. You are not a very happy person, just in general, or like a yeah. A I would I would say that I, I'm just average, I guess. Mm. Happy, not just yeah. Do you wish? Wh okay, so when you're acting yeah. and you're channeling happiness, what are you thinking about when you're channeling that? Oh, <laughs> just very little things in life, which made me sometimes really happy. Like if I see someone picking on waste and throw it into the garbage can or something like that that can make me really happy just a few seconds of a day or like if i talk to you right now that makes me happy to oh, be I'm honest glad, i'm glad that talking to me has made you happy it's yeah. very sweet of you to say <laughs> i hope it's the same for you <laughs> yeah talking to you has made me happy as well actually it should make you happy otherwise you probably not do it
Yeah, yeah. No, I feel I feel similar. And I like costumes also. Oh. Well, have you ever? Uh, do you think wearing a costume would make you feel happy? Oh yeah, definitely. I I got a tiger, which I wear every year at carnival. Now, um, <laughs> what uh, uh, what emotion? What about anger? Do you feel anger? Not that often, actually. It's more sadness than anger, which I feel. Mm -hmm. Because I do a lot of sports. It's make maybe because of my workouts. It's, I'm just calming down mm -hmm. every day, so mm -hmm. I, I never get on a high level, or it's never, it never gets big. Mm -hmm. What's your dream role? Dream role? To be a gecko. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> I think that would be cool too. It's fun being a gecko. I guess so, but isn't it hot? It is hot, but <laughs> I'm kind of getting used to it. <laughs> right. It's been chill talking to you. I mean, I've, I've, you're calming me down a little bit. I feel like really? I've been out here for about two hours. Yeah, you know, so you like that. I've been in here too. I've you know, where you've been here for two hours. What have you been doing? Yeah, so in the back, I was just memorizing texts. Can you recite what you memorized at all? <laughs> you want to hear it? Yeah, kind of do. Um, it's like I'll have a bowl of your racing brand. You want to share this? That was the first two lines, mm -hmm. and if you want to get the script, I can give you, and you can read the other part. I think I'll, I'll wait until the final product is out on <laughs> TV. Is, it a, is this a Raisin Brand commercial? Almost. No, it's about, that's from a script from Silver Linings. Do you know the movie? Silver Linings Playbook? Yeah. Okay, I that's thought it was a Raisin Brand commercial. <laughs> no, it's not actually. <laughs> there are, yeah, it's a long story. Okay. Put it away. <laughs> Did you um? Hmm. What are you feeling right now? Calm. I'm so looking calm forward too. to to go to Panda Express after. That's why I was gonna food. go after this. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> I love Panda. I like Panda Express too. It's just the uh, the best fast food. I don't like to call it fast food no, <laughs> it's, because it's, it's there's rice and vegetables. And rice and vegetables, yeah. I, I don't think it's <laughs> yeah. fast food. I'm looking forward for this. Awesome. And I go now. Thank Very you. Nice to meet you, man. Mr. Gecko. Thank you for talking to a gecko. <laughs> this has been Being a Gecko at the Park. We talked to many different characters. Uh, I'm feeling good. I think I have sun poisoning. My brain feels like it is molded into a soup. But uh, this has been fun. Uh, as with all these things, I start off thinking that this is a bad idea, and then I end being like, wow, that was crazy that something actually happened as a result of doing this, and I feel uh, good about it, and I appreciate you watching, and I will see you again somewhere else on the computer.